Our new resources that we've created this year really start out with uh, asking students to struggle with math tasks. And really when we think about letting all learners succeed, this is an important piece because we want every student to come to the table being able to struggle. It may seem a little crazy at first, but in talking to some of the researchers, I even had a pushback to them. And what they kind of let me know was, hey, what about when you try something new out? Let's say you get a brand new phone. Nowadays, you don't even get an operating guide with it. So you have to rely on the things that you know. And we think about kids who go in and play video games all the time and have no idea the instructions of where they're going, but somehow they figure it out and somehow they succeed. And so we want to give students the same opportunity in their learning as well. I suggested to my teachers that we take off all the headings as far as what's the modeled instruction, guide instruction, let's just let our kids struggle. We need to break through that gradual release process in terms of math. Truthfully, when she said that at first, I was completely against it. Um, my first thought was, how's that going to work? Um, I'm their teacher, so it's my job to make sure that they don't struggle. The teachers at first were a little bit apprehensive. Once they learned the process, we really saw our students flourish. We saw our data skyrocket. They are able to do a whole lot more than I thought they were able to do. You just have to give them the opportunity. In our eyes, we think, no, they're struggling, I need to take over and jump in. But if you really just step back and kind of monitor and facilitate, you'll see them working together and you'll see them building relationships with each other and they're getting through that process themselves when we're asking students to struggle, they also have to feel comfortable to be able to be wrong. So the end result was definitely student achievement, but it wasn't just the way we taught math, it was also the relationships. And once they see that, you know, I was there for them, that's allowed them to turn back and give their trust to me. So even a student who's a low level student and may get the answer incorrect the first time, we want to just accept that answer and let the student explain their thinking. And what we have seen is that then the high level students actually now have to articulate themselves quite a bit better to explain their thinking. And then the lower level students can learn from those higher level students or oftentimes our lower level students will solve things in ways that we never thought possible because now students are actually taking everything that they know and applying it to new knowledge and then they're able to learn even more. We ask that every student be brought to the table. That doesn't mean that we don't have to reteach content to some of those students, but in the beginning, we're gonna allow every student to try and we're gonna take notes to make sure that as a teacher, you know where there might need to be some extra help, but it wouldn't be in that moment because we wanna build that relationship, that culture in the classroom to allow students to be wrong and to learn from each other. And then after you might transition into a small group, maybe you can pull some of those kids aside and talk about some of the learning that happened in the larger group. The final results in my class, I believe over 61% proficient in my class. And from the rest, a lot of learning gains on top of that as well. The kids loved it because they felt like they were the teachers. Their data skyrocketed. I think I had 76% proficiency on FSA, so it worked. It was tough at first, but it was more entertaining, actually more enjoyable to do it that way versus from the normal routine. It was a new experience each day from doing it. They'll be able to have those problem solving skills, not only for math, but everything that they do in real life. And that's how we really create those 21st century learners. Bottom line, let's put the fun back into teaching.